eight teams out in the water. Everyone gets to surf twice. There's our first heat. You're going to see in red, Lucas Schianke, Nick Von Rupp. In cyan blue, Justine Dupont, Antonio Loriano. And in team brown, Carty, Andrew Cotton and Will Scudin teaming up. Equipment's a key element here. Who's going to be, you know, having the board that's going to be going the fastest? Because uh, speed is a huge element that you need to have here to make these waves. Yeah, the equipment the guys are using, it's really unique, especially to Nazare. Like you said, you need that extra weight. Some of their, their boards can weigh up to 10 kg, I believe. Live action here. Looks like Andrew Cotton getting one early doors, going the right-hand option. Here's Cotty with a ton of speed. This one will shut down uh -oh. in front of him. And uh -oh. We mentioned that right hand up can get you into trouble. It's been it pretty much since day dot. Let's have another look, Pete. He likes to ride these waves all the way to the bitter end, doesn't he? Um, that's one thing I've noticed that he wants to get everything out of it. He will not kick out. It's actually probably a very smart thing to do too, is to put yourself all the way to the inside. Here he had no escape. I mean, you can see that avalanche of white water coming down on him. And here's where it converges. And once it converges like that, you're actually getting uh, uh, an element of extra energy together. They, they converge and it's literally so much water moving around. His sinuses are filled with salt water at the moment. Uh, he would have inflated right out of the gates here. He's almost probably searching for his toggle right now. Deal with a ton of white water there. Meanwhile, right behind Lucas Chumbo Chianka loves these big lefts. We know all about his aggressive line through. And this just getting first vision on these first waves. Solid out there, boys. It is, and uh, it's interesting. When you show up in the morning, you see nobody on the water, you see these big peaks, you're like, oh, is it big enough? You know, and as soon as you see a surfer on a wave, you're like, wow. You've, you've gone into this fear factor, and all of a sudden you've gone, I got to get to the surface. That clicking of it is a very dangerous place to be. You don't want to ever be there. You always want to just know that you're going to be able to make it. So you always want to keep pushing yourself to that uncomfortable zone. And uh, when you do that, you get more comfortable with it. We've got Justine Dupont here on a right hand up. As we see the skis uh -oh. just getting over the uh -oh. shoulder, trying not to wake up the face too much. She'll deal with some white water grabbing the board. And in that spot right there is where you don't tend to want to see a wave bearing down on you. There's the pickup for Justine. Nice little fade on this one, Pete. Right, you know, and we're going to see maneuvers come into play here. I think that holding of the rail, you know, you're going so fast that you need your equipment to be able to stay steady there. She had a bit of bump on the face. You're getting reverberation off the cliff coming at her with the other ski little wakes. So there's a lot to deal with. Um, sometimes it's a little bit, it, it's very smart to just kind of jump out of the straps occasionally because you do not want to have that foot attached to it. It's like Jumbo here in a steep pocket. Didn't get the barrel he was looking for. And he'll hack one off the top with a ton of speed. Look at Watch this out. section in Watch here. Out. And he's going so fast. He does so well to outrun that explosion. Yeah, he's so good at this. I mean, he's literally Smooth coming from. Well. Yeah, and that's, again, when you start looking at these these surfers that separate themselves, it's, it's how long you hold the rail and how much speed they're carrying through it. I mean, that was a beautifully well-ridden wave. You know, he's up, up in the pocket. Um, and then the, the actual down carve turn right before the lip jumps onto him. You just look at the speed he's carrying as he just lays this bottom turn down. You now have your equipment that's going to be solid. Look at that big maneuver right up in the critical section. This should be a pretty darn good score. It was a good size wave, um, and the maneuvers were excellent. And Connor, the way Chumbo surfs this wave, I mean, we've seen it down the years, but it does seem to be, I don't want to say toying with it, but he's does have that performance effort. It's always got a smile on his face as well, and it is intense. It's dangerous, but it kind of seems like he's always having fun. Yeah, I think it's it's that natural exuberance he has. It translates into his surfing, and you can see there he's just so stoked, even though he's about to get pummeled. Uh, you know, so he can keep a view on everything. It's such a great support system. We have uh, you know, emergency uh, folks here. Uh oh. Oh, and I'm assuming he would have gone over the falls with that, unless he got really lucky. That was being shot again. Drone will pick up vision here. We do have a priority system in place, of course, and we've got information being relayed from our team of spotters who are up there on top of the fort, on top of the cliff. So we'll pick up live action here. And a nice fade going for the left-hander. Looks like Scudin again. So busy from our team in brown. Cotton with the big right early on. Looks like we're into one here. That's, uh, again, that's um, Will Scoot. Will Scoot once again. On the right hand, a bit of a slopey one for Will. Don't tend to see a load of 
backside from the Goofies in. Most of the Goofies tend to love the lefts. Will Scoop have a look at some rights this morning? I'm wondering if that's due to, I mean, every swell has a little bit of different direction. Sometimes I feel like the rights are going to be the better call. Let's see what uh, Nick Von Rupp has for us here. Here's Nick Clout getting whipped in. A little hop in, he'll carve down on this one and fade himself up for a big bolt. He loves to put himself steep and deep. That's Nick Von Rupp pumping for speed here. Outrun a jet ski somewhere behind that white water and then finish up with an absolute ton of speed. Wow, that was another section that he was able to find there. That was awesome. And you can see the skis will ride up along the, the lip line just to be able to keep the vision uh, of what the surfer is doing so that when you see either a fall happen, you can either you know, slow down to be able to come back and pick it up. Yeah, look at this here, Connor. Do you like this left from Nicola? I really like his initial approach into it he was already setting up for that big carve on the first peak which is very intimidating to do and yeah he's managed to find this second section which is a little bonus section here he's probably looking for a barrel but it didn't happen on that one but um yeah he'll keep hunting it i bet it did look like he's got a little hand stall for the end yeah. section so nick's someone has spent a lot of time up in ireland as well chasing swells up there he must have had some some fun uh, seeing his approach seeing his attack his lines some of the waves at home for sure, I've known Nick for a very long time. He, he's come and surfed our slabs a lot and come and paddled Mulligmore a lot, and he's definitely helped raise the bar. It's become a really well-recognized scene and super popular. People flooding in from all around the world. You walk down that path from the part of the town called City Only. Just hear kind of languages and accents literally everywhere. A huge attraction and a big belt of water. As we'll pick up a big calf. Looks like Scooter on a left. Scooting just eases a big snap off the top. And he'll finish here down on the inside. Pick up there from Andrew Cotton. These two with all of that experience behind them. I know this wave inside. It's a lot to deal with for our surfers. This was uh, the wave previous. Uh, uh, looked like Will Scooting. You know, sometimes these peaks, you know, they stand up super tall and they never really break. They just become big, gigantic swells. This kind of feels like that's what happened to to Will here. One of the things that uh, you do is that sled off the back, which uh, allows for quick pickups, as you watch here. Some aerial antics from Nick Von Rupp. Interesting to see just the speed when you get the drone view from here. You get a better view of what the wave's doing. Now that section is unfolding from above. You can just see the intense speed and basically the chatter on that board and the map shot you've got to deal with. We were talking about that quick, McConnor, and obviously people know that tow boards are a little bit heavier. How important is it to get those right tow boards? Um, and yeah, like, like we can see here, he's kind of able to air down that wave pretty easy and carry his speed through here into the bottom turn. Looked like he was just trying to get over the track of the ski, right? Like yeah. He was just trying to avoid that trouble water, and that's going to always be a factor. Particularly here, we've got well, our drivers, we've got safety skis as well, so bunch. Be smooth, right? And I think that's where the weight comes into, uh, you know, you're needing to have that extra weight. Straps always keep you planted to the surfboard so you can do those aerial type moves where you can jump over chops or jump over and kind of unweight uh, similar to say a snowboard where you're able to do a slope style or you know you can kind of uh, carry your speed by unweighting and weighting as we're watching this is uh, during the interview here beautiful carving maneuvers there i mean that's just weaving back and forth looks like uh scooting yeah looks like him so Scootin' uh, weaving his way on that big, massive peak. I mean, it's like snowboarding. That's literally what you're doing. They didn't want to get it known because they thought it was a bad one. Yeah, well, in Pride and Norte, it was, it was you know, legendary because it had taken a few fishermen's souls over the years. And, um, you know, so getting uh, you know, a buy-in from a lot of the professional surfers out there, it took a little while. Uh, and definitely, I was asked to come join, and it, it didn't happen <laughs> for me. <laughs> it's like, yeah, there's this wave. And I'm like, you know, and it took me... Um, to come visit uh, Portugal and, and head up to Nazaré to, to really understand the place and realize, wow, this place is definitely special. The team starts out as a team and they have to finish as a team. And unfortunately, they're not going to be bringing in any extra drivers. So we won't see uh, Antonio, unfortunately, get any waves unless Justine is able to pull herself together, maybe. Um, but we just don't know yet how that extensive that injury is. Cotton socks on the left hand option. Andrew Cotton. And he'll look. Down the line at a section and realize that one running away. Smart. 
seems a lot of bend on this swell, right? A lot of waves kind of wrapping in, which is generally what we want. You don't want the waves to kind of back out the sea, but some crazy angles going down here. Yeah. Looks like Vaughan Rupp again here. Into one. Oh, nice and early. Let's go. And a big old fade here. He wants to try and put himself inside this. He'll have to low line it and a hut for speed as well, just to get himself out there. That one pinching. And she'll do that, Nazare. <laughs> such a danger isn't it i mean he's riding the three fin so he's counting on that punching of the bottom turn to really get that extra speed um you know the one thing i will say about a three fin sometimes is that they don't have that top end speed you know just going straight and overall going straight it'll feel like it's going faster but here you can see he's trying to get himself lift to get uh, above and no friction just to keep that speed going i think one of the cool points of this contest with Nick is that um, his mentor Joao was in at Team Purple and Joao um, you know you say that Nick didn't want anything to do with this place I think having Joao as a mentor probably really helped his big wave career because Joao's a bit of a legend in uh, the big wave scene especially in Portugal. He, every time he got a little bit of lickings he just came back stronger. That's what you need to do. Cotton hit getting one and getting pinged Big looking wave. Yeah, that's a massive wall right there and just unfortunately fading a little bit too much and that's one issue that you would have when you're in competition. At the last of the action here. Oh, that's a big peak there and again going that right hand direction. Big carving maneuver there. Setting it up through the inside and at this point you're okay. Do you want to keep riding it or do you want to kick out and, and get yourself the ski ride back out? Cotton again loving the rights. And he likes to ride these waves all the way to the bitter end. As he's carrying a 1.67, or sorry, uh, yeah, 1.67 as one of his rides. So this will uh, improve his top score line. So this was a good move here at the end of the heat. Looks like also getting a wave there. Shianka back on the Lucas. It sure looks like it. And look at it, he's like, get me inside. Just to pick out exactly what's happened, official results of that heat. It costs no elimination at this stage. Everyone's going to get the surf again. But it is Team Red pretty much looking pretty dominant in terms of scores.